Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be a sci-fi and horror movie from 1979 called Alien. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. A cargo spaceship for commercial purposes called the Nostromo picks up an unknown signal while on its way back to Earth. The ship's computer system, Mother, roused the crew from their deep sleep to check it out. Warrant Officer Ripley, Captain Douglas, Executive Officer Kane, Navigator Lambert, Science Officer Ash, and Engineers Parker and Brett. Lambert notes that they are off their planned route and Ripley cannot reach traffic control for help. Dallas tells them that Mother redirected their path because of the signal and they are required to look into it. Lambert plays the eerie, unfamiliar transmission which is from a nearby small planet. The crew separates the Nostromo from its cargo section and sets off towards the planetoid to start their mission. Their landing damages the ship, leaving them temporarily stuck while Brett and Parker make repairs. Dallas, Kane, and Lambert venture out to trace the signal's origin, with Ash watching their progress remotely. The group treks across the brutal landscape until they find a crashed alien ship. As they enter, they lose contact with Ash. Inside, they encounter bizarre structures and eventually come upon a giant humanoid corpse, apparently the ship's pilot, in the control room. Meanwhile, Ripley decodes the transmission and discovers it's a warning, not a distress call. She tries to communicate this to Dallas and the others, but Ash advises her to hold back. Inside the alien ship, Kane stumbles upon a chamber filled with eggs, covered in a mysterious blue mist. Fascinated, he approaches an egg that opens, revealing a pulsating life form. As he examines it closely, the creature springs out and latches onto his face. Dallas and Lambert rush the unconscious Kane back to the Nostromo. Ripley, following quarantine rules, refuses to let them inside, but Ash overrides her and opens the door. In the infirmary, while removing Kane's shattered helmet, they find the creature, dubbed a facehugger, firmly attached to his face. Ripley confronts Dallas about the breach of protocol but is interrupted when Lambert strikes her, upset by her initial refusal to open the ship. While examining Kane, they find that the facehugger is somehow keeping him alive. Dallas orders its removal against Ash's cautions, fearing it might be fatal. When they try to cut the creature, its acidic blood burns through the floor, corroding two decks below. This forces them to delay the removal and focus on ship repairs. Ash studies the creature further, learning its cells have adapted to extreme conditions, making it tough to destroy. Ripley accuses Ash of jeopardizing the crew by breaking quarantine, but Ash insists he's just doing his duty. Later, Ash calls Dallas and Ripley to the infirmary, where they find the facehugger has detached but Kane remains unconscious. They cautiously inspect the area, aware the creature might still be a threat. Ripley is startled when the facehugger falls onto her, but she quickly discards it. Ash collects it for further analysis. Despite Ripley's protests to dispose of it, Ash wants to keep studying this novel creature. Dallas explains that while he commands the ship, Ash oversees the scientific operations, leaving the decision to Ash. Despite the repairs not being fully complete, Dallas instructs the crew to leave the planetoid and reconnect with their cargo ship. The team managed to successfully launch the Nostromo. Later, in the dining hall, they discuss how to handle Kane's situation. Parker proposes freezing him to halt any potential infection he might have contracted. Dallas decides that Kane will be quarantined and Ripley suggests that they all should undergo quarantine since they've all been exposed to him. Lambert shares that it will take another 10 months to reach Earth. Eventually, Kane wakes up in the infirmary, appearing healthy but confused about the events that transpired. The crew gathers for a celebratory meal in anticipation of returning to cryo sleep for the journey home. However, their celebration is cut short when Kane begins to choke violently at the table. As he thrashes in agony, the crew tries to restrain him, but suddenly, amidst his screams and blood splattering, a small creature bursts from his chest. Lambert screams in terror as the creature looks around, seemingly assessing its surroundings. Ash prevents Parker from attacking it, wary that it might have the same acidic blood as the facehugger. The creature then shrieks and escapes into the air vents. The crew pauses to honor Kane with a moment of silence before they eject his body into space. Afterward, Brett constructs cattle prods to tackle the alien without getting too close. Ash introduces a motion-sensing tracking device to help locate the creature. Dallas organizes them into two teams to try and drive the creature into an airlock. Ripley teams up with Parker and Brett, armed with cattle prods and a net, and they venture into the supply room where they detect movement in a drawer. Preparing for a confrontation, they open the drawer only to find the crew's cat, Jones, causing them to laugh off the tense moment after the scare. While chasing Jones through the ship's hold, Brett hears noises above him but sees the cat in a different spot. 
He finds Jones cowering behind some machinery, and as the cat runs off, Brett discovers a piece of skin shed by the alien. Ignoring it, he enjoys the illusion of rain created by dripping water, not noticing the now fully grown alien lurking nearby. When Jones hisses at something, Brett turns and comes face to face with the alien. Paralyzed with fear, he doesn't react in time as the alien grabs him by the head and lifts him away. Ripley and Parker rush towards Brett's screams but find only traces of blood. The crew gathers to reassess their situation. The alien has moved into the air ducts, prompting Dallas to devise a plan to corner it and force it into the airlock. Dallas enters the ducts armed with a flamethrower, guided by Lambert's directions and monitored by Ripley and Ash. However, Lambert's tracker loses the alien's signal momentarily. When it picks up again, she urgently tells Dallas to flee as the alien approaches him, but it's too late. Dallas is ambushed. After Dallas's signal goes dead, the remaining crew reconvenes, filled with anger and grief. Ripley, now leading, proposes continuing with Dallas's plan to expel the alien via the airlock. She instructs Parker to refuel the flamethrower and questions Ash for any additional information or ideas. When he provides none, she decides to seek answers directly from Mother, the ship's computer. Inside Mother's interface, Ripley discovers that Ash had secret orders to secure the alien, even at the cost of the crew's safety. Frustrated and unaware of Ash's presence beside her, she doesn't notice him quietly observing her actions. Enraged by the betrayal of her crew, Ripley confronts Ash, only to find him blocking her path, preventing her from informing the others of the danger. During the confrontation, Ripley notices a strange white liquid dripping from Ash's head. Ash then attacks Ripley, throwing her against a wall and preparing to suffocate her with a magazine. Just in time, Parker and Lambert intervene. Parker manages to strike Ash with a fuel tank, freeing Ripley. Ash begins malfunctioning, spewing liquid, and in the struggle, Parker hits his head, revealing Ash's true robotic nature. Despite severe damage, Ash continues to resist until Lambert stabs him with a pole. Later, Ripley manages to access Ash's internal systems to briefly reactivate him for answers. Ash admits he was programmed to ensure the alien was brought back alive. When asked about killing the alien, Ash informs them it's impossible, praising the alien's perfect survival traits. Before deactivating him, Ash taunts Ripley about their bleak chances of survival. Angered, Parker destroys Ash's remains with fire. Determined, Ripley decides to follow Lambert's earlier suggestion, escape in the shuttle and destroy the Nostromo, alien included. Ripley prepares the shuttle while Parker and Lambert collect the necessary coolants. Ripley, while setting up the shuttle, pauses to find the cat, Jones. Meanwhile, Lambert and Parker, gathering supplies, encounter the alien. The alien corners them, towering over both. Parker tries to intervene but is killed, urging Lambert to flee, but she is paralyzed by fear and soon killed. Alone and distraught, Ripley rushes to their aid but finds only silence and death. Overwhelmed with panic and grief, she activates the ship's self-destruct sequence and makes her way to the shuttle. As she descends into the cargo hold, she hears a noise and discovers Dallas and Brett cocooned and barely alive. After a painful farewell, she incinerates them to end their suffering. With the countdown nearing its end, Ripley sees the alien blocking her path to the shuttle. In a frantic escape back to the engine room to halt the self-destruct, she fails, gaining only a few extra minutes. Rushing back to the shuttle, she sees no sign of the alien, quickly boards the shuttle with Jones and launches away from the Nostromo. As the ship explodes, Ripley reflects on her lost crew, momentarily relieved that the alien is destroyed with the ship. However, Ripley's relief is short-lived as she discovers the alien has stowed away in the shuttle's engine. She hides, suits up, and arms herself with a harpoon gun. Carefully, she lures the alien out with gas and opens the airlock, attempting to expel it into space. The alien clings to the shuttle, but Ripley fires the harpoon, forcing it to let go. As it tries to re-enter through an exhaust, Ripley activates the engine, incinerating it. Exhausted but alive, Ripley records a report detailing the events and the fate of the Nostromo and her crew. With everything settled, she prepares for cryosleep, taking a moment to secure herself and Jones, ensuring they are safe as they head back to Earth. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.